والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعض We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam We are now at the last day of this, the second international Islamic retreat which is taking place here in Cape Town, in Simon's Town. We thank Allah who has made it possible for the retreat to take place. And we pray and pray and pray even more that Allah may bless the young and the small team who have worked so very hard here in Cape Town. So very hard to make this retreat possible and to provide us with all the beauty of yesterday in that lovely drive around the sea coast and the nice uh, barbecue dinner last night and the biryani that's coming up today <laughs> and we pray that Allah may make it possible for a third international Islamic retreat to take place about one year from now uh, in Malaysia or in Brunei and that Allah may bless His Excellency uh, Ambassador Yuvadlan Rose on whose back he doesn't know it is yet. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of responsibility for organizing that retreat in Malaysia, inshallah. Amen. Our subject today is uh, the Muslim village and in fact it is the culmination of all that we were taught <coughs> during the retreat. What we have done in this retreat is to turn to the Quran and turn to Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala that they might explain the strange world in which we live today. And that as a result of that explanation, we can anticipate what tomorrow has in store. And that they might guide us how to respond to the awesome challenges of the modern age. It is to Maulana Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah that we owe the deepest depth of gratitude that he should put this in the curriculum of studies of Delhi May Institute of Islamic Studies using the word modern thought to ask us to study the modern age and we have done that we have come to a conclusion concerning the modern world Our conclusion is based on objective analysis of objective data all around us. You can see it. <coughs> We say that this is a world that is collapsing. We say that we are looking at this world with two eyes, not with one. And we say that this looks like the worst world there's ever been. There's never been more godlessness. There's never been more decadence. Yes, there has been godlessness in different parts of the world. Yes, there has been decadence in different parts of the world. Yes, there has been oppression in different parts of the world in history. But we are saying that today it is universalized and it has been globalized and so godlessness is now globalized decadence is now globalized oppression is now globalized and what we are seeing those who see with two eyes is that we are seeing for the first time in human history a political dictatorship 
descending upon the entire world. And it looks very ugly. Libya is getting a taste of it now. An economic dictatorship descending upon all of mankind. A financial dictatorship descending upon all of mankind that I have de defined as a financial Guantanamo waiting to occur. We say this is the worst of all possible worlds. <coughs> a world in which those who have faith in Allah and whose conduct is righteous are now targeted, demonized, terrorized. A world in which there is universal poverty and destitution and a few people A few people are traveling with permanent first class tickets on this ship. <coughs> and our conclusion is that this is not going to last. That this ship is sinking. But then there are others who see with only one eye and who are dazzled by the cell phones and the internet and the wireless laptop and by something called Skype. Is that how you pronounce it? And MSN Messenger, is that how you call it? And chatting on a chat room with people from all over the world and so on. Now this is the best of all worlds where you can fly back and forth in minutes, where yesterday used to take months. There's never been a better world than this. Not only is this the best of all worlds, but more than that, all that came before this world have now been superseded, have now become redundant, and religion is included in that. It has been superseded. Religion now belongs to the museums of history. Huh? This is the difference between those who see with two eyes and those who see with one. Our subject here is directed only to those who see with two eyes. Our subject is applicable and relevant only to those who recognize that we are on board a sinking ship. If you are not convinced that this is a sinking ship, then you can stay in Johannesburg, no problem. We say that this ship is sinking and as a consequence, we need to get off the ship. We recognize that the ship is sinking most of all because of shirk. Yes, there is riba, which is very bad. Yes, there is zina, which is terrible, it stinks. And there are so many other things that are causing the ship to sink. But we say that the ship is sinking most of all because of shirk that we are now enveloped and embraced by a universal ship and that is why the ship is sinking. <coughs> there is evidence in the hadith. Of course, you know that Allah says in the Quran, this is the one sin that he will not forgive. He says that in the Quran. We have, we have reminded you several times in this retreat of the hadith which is located in Sahih Bukhari four times in Sahih Bukhari four times from so four different sources four different chains of narration that on judgment day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Adam alayhi salam take out the people for the hellfire 
and he will ask how many are they O oh Allah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply and say out of every 1000 take 999 for the hellfire if that is not a wake up call well then what else can a wake up call be The companions of the Prophet ﷺ were dismayed, terrified when they heard that. And he could see it in their faces. And then he smiled and he said, good news for you. Good news for you. The one for Jannah will be from you. From you. Meaning, a people who have the truth and who live the truth not George Bush and company. The 999, however, he described as Gog and Magog and as Ahlu Gog, Ahlu Yajuj wa Ma'juj. In other words, in other words, a God who is merciful and forgiving and who is prepared to forgive all sins. Inna Allah yaghfiru zunuba jami'a. Allah is prepared to forgive all sins. Tell my servants, even if they come to me with sins as high as the sky, I will forgive them all. A God who is merciful and forgiving and compassionate, sends 999 out of every 1,000 into the hellfire. What explanation can there be for it? There's only one. Shirk. Because he said, I will not forgive this sin. He said, the one for Jannah will be from me. It will be from, from you, sorry. And the 999 would be from Gog and Magog. From this hadith, we have two major signs of the last day. We have shirk, universal shirk, which will come only from Dajjal. He said about that shirk, he said that the shirk of this ummah, the hadith is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, the shirk of this ummah would be as difficult to recognize as it would be to recognize a black ant on a black stone in the darkness of the night. And the kafara is that you should recite, O oh Allah, kindly protect me from the shirk of which I am not aware. The shirk which I commit of which I am not aware. And kindly forgive me for the sins that I knowingly commit. The Jal is the mastermind of the universal shirk. And in this hadith there is also Gog and Magog. That when Gog and Magog are released, we know that they will spread out in all directions. And Gog and Magog have as their trademark facade. They corrupt and destroy everything. And as they've embraced 999 out of every 1,000, a global society emerges. And that global society would be the global society or the Jamaat of God and Magad. We are saying to you in this retreat, having dealt with the subject of God and Magad in one extended session of this retreat, we are saying to you that the global society around the world today that we fondly describe as the Blue Jeans Jamaat is the Jamaat of God and Magad and it's taking all of mankind into the hellfire. And it has as its basic characteristic, it's shit. Having said that, how do we respond? 